Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets, and today's video tutorial is going to be on method overloading in Java. So, in the previous couple of videos, we saw what is methods in Java, and we also saw constructors in Java. So, if you have missed that videos, you can check it out in this playlist. And now we'll move on to the method overloading concept. So again, I'm going to be using our official website to cover the theoretical aspect and then we'll see a programming part that is a programming example. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get both theory as well as the practical knowledge. And with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So quickly open up your browser and you can go on to this website that is simple snippets.tech and you can go to the courses and core Java part wherein you'll see the link of method overloading. Or you can directly click this link, which is there in the description of this video. So what exactly is method overloading? Now, if you're coming from a C++ background and if you've done the C++ object oriented part, and if you've watched the videos that I have on C++, I'm pretty sure you must be knowing what is function overloading because we've extensively covered that topic and method overloading is pretty much the same like what we did in function overloading in C++. So this topic is going to be very easy. So let me just tell you in general what it does. So if a class has multiple methods having the same name, but there are different parameters that is known as method overloading. So what does it give us and help us in achieving? Well, overloading allows different methods to have same name, but it has different signatures. So the different signatures can be different by number of input parameters. That is this or type of input parameters. That is the data type of input parameters or the order of input parameters. Okay. Now overloading is related to compile time polymorphism. So this is a concept of polymorphism and we'll take a deep look and theoretical look on polymorphism in a couple of videos. So right now you just need to understand there is a concept of polymorphism, which enables us to perform method overloading in Java. And now to understand its benefits, let's try to take an actual example and then you'll understand where exactly Java method overloading will help us and how it makes our program more readable and more efficient and more easy to understand. So here's an image and you can see I have two blocks. One is without method overloading and one is with method overloading. So imagine a program wherein the requirement is that you want to perform addition. Okay. So initially you want to add only two numbers. So you make a method, you say int add two, and then in the parameters, we have two integer numbers. So inside the body of this method, you say return X plus Y, which means the two parameters that you pass in will be added and returned. Okay. So this was add two. Now assume that we don't have method overloading over here. Huh? So now say for example, there is a new requirement that is you want to perform addition of three numbers. So when there is no method overloading, what will you do? You will create a new function with a new name, right? New method with a new name. So this time you will give some relevant name, say add three, and then you'll pass three parameters and then you'll perform the addition and return those three parameters as the return type is int. Now again, a new requirement comes in and you want to add four numbers. So you again give a new method name as add four pass in four parameters and return the addition of those four parameters. So now if you observe, essentially what we are doing is we are performing addition, right? So why do we need three different method names? Why can't we use the same name? Because eventually or ultimately we are performing addition only, right? So that's where method overloading comes into picture. Now let's see this green box, which is with method overloading. Here you can see we have used the same name add, add and add, but here we have different parameters. So here there are two parameters, there are three and there are four. So this is possible because of method overloading, wherein the number of parameters here is different. Now the type of parameters could have also been different. That is one could be float or one could be double. So that would have also worked or the order of parameters could have also been different and that could have also worked. Of course, we'll see an example. So what are the advantages? Well, the major advantage is that method overloading increases the readability of the program, right? So you don't have to create different names to perform essentially the same task. If you're performing addition, you want to use the same function name for multiple parameters, right? So that's where the advantage comes into picture. And lastly, there are different ways to overload the method. And the three ways that we already discussed are by changing the number of arguments, by changing the data type of arguments, and by changing the order of the arguments, if there are different data types involved. So this was a little bit of theory about method overloading. Let's quickly jump to the programming part. So quickly open up your NetBeans IDE so that we can program together. Okay, so I have opened up my NetBeans ID and I have also created a new project and I have named it as method overloading.java. So you can name anything, but I would recommend that you program along with me for the best practice. So yeah, let's start off with creating our methods. 
So we'll take the same example of addition. So I'm going to say int add. So first I'm going to pass two parameters. So I'm going to say int x comma int y. And in the body I'm just going to write return. And in the bracket I'm going to say x plus y. So what it will do is whatever parameters we pass, it will first perform addition and then that value will be returned. So we, our method has a return type int, right? So it has to return some value. So this return statement is important. So this is the first function. Now let's say we want to perform addition of three numbers. So I'm going to say add. I'm going to use the same name. You can see we are using add and add. I'm going to say int x, int y and int z or z depending upon where you stay. And here I'm going to say return x plus y plus z or z. So basically we've achieved that method overloading here itself. But let's say you want to introduce one more addition, but this time you want to perform addition of two double numbers. So I'm going to say int. No, I'm going to say double add double x comma double y. And then I'm going to say return x plus y. So here you can see there are parameters that is the number of parameters is two and even the number of parameters here is two, but the type of parameters is different. So that's what makes this method overloading possible. If I would have again created int and int over here, it would have thrown me an error. You can see the error is method add is already defined, right? So we already have one, then you cannot create same method again. Okay. So this was about method overloading. Now let's see what happens in the main function. I'm going to create an object of method overloading class because all these methods are inside our class. So I'm going to say method overloading obj is equal to new method overloading. So our object is created in the memory. Now I'm going to say int a or int total one is equal to, I'm going to use the object to call the function because we have to use the object with the dot operator. And I'm going to say add and here I'm going to pass five and six. So which function is going to be called the first one, right? Because both of them are integers. And then I can say system dot out dot print ln total is and then I'll say it, total one. Okay. Let's just save this and let's try to run this. So our pro program is running. So there you go. You can see total is 11, which means our program ran correctly. Five plus six is 11. Now let's see the next function. I'll say the same variable that is total one is equal to obj dot add. And now I'm going to pass three values. I'm going to say three comma two comma one. Let's see if this works. If I run this, there you go. The total is 11. Okay. I forgot to print this. So just cut this part and print it below the total one is equal to this line below this line so that we get the latest value of total one, save this. And there you go. Total is six. So three plus two plus one is six. And lastly, let's see if it works for double also. So we'll have to create a double variable. I'm going to say total two is equal to obj dot add. And inside that I'm going to pass 3.5 and 2.2. So the total should be equal to 5.7, right? Let's save this. Now let's try to run this. So there you go. You can see total is 5.7. So, so this means our program is working fine. And this was a little bit about method overloading, the theoretical part, as well as the programming example. And I also wanted to talk about constructor overloading. So in the previous video, we saw the concept of constructors, but we did not see how to overload them. But essentially we did overload them because we use the same constructor name, but we created a default as well as parameterized constructor. So essentially we were doing constructor overloading as well. So in order to do that, you can say method overloading because constructor and class name is to be same. And in the default constructor, I can say default. And then I can also create a parameterized constructor wherein I can pass any value and I can say system dot out dot print ln parameterized. Okay. So here I can assign this instance variable num is equal to x that we pass in the parameterized constructor. So I can again create one more parameterized constructor with more parameters. So I'll say int y and then this would be parameterized constructor two. So this program will work perfectly fine and you can go ahead and 
enhance this and add more functionalities. So essentially this is again constructor overloading because constructor is again a method, right? So we can overload that also. So this was something that we missed out in the previous video tutorial. So I hope you understand now what is constructor overloading as well as method overloading. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you like this video. You can go check out the article on the website. Make sure you bookmark the website. I have added notifications to the website. Turn on those notifications so that whenever I post a new article, not just on tutorial, but any other news related to information technology or computer science, new programming tutorial, new Android application, new latest news, you'll get notified on the website. So yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.